Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters. The detective whose ability of solving crime is unequal in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, master detective. Yeah, we can check it and 
be with Lisa. Oh, Watson? Yes, yes. Were you on duty here last night? Sure. I'm the night watchman here. Stayed on this morning until Mr. Evans and the owner gets here. Did you see the fire start? Yes, yes. I, I was just coming back from the lunch wagon. They got me a cup of gel. Oh, Alex. And just, uh, Alex, how did this happen here? Well, uh, Mr. Emerson, like I was telling these fellas, I was coming back from getting a cup of coffee, and suddenly I seen a big flare of greenish blue light in, in the room just outside the office. And before I could turn around, the whole place was ablaze. The office was in this corner, wasn't it? Uh, that's right. Uh, who are these men, Alex? I'm Sergeant Matheson, city police. This is Nick Carter, investigator for the insurance company. Well, I'm Walter Emerson, owner of the warehouse. You say you saw an explosion, Alex. Uh, kind of like that, but there wasn't so much noise uh, like an explosion. Well, I don't understand. There was nothing in there to explode. Whatever exploded was planted there for that purpose, Mr. Emerson. This fire was no accident. It was set. But why? There was nothing here but furniture. Who would want to destroy that? A pile of many. I doesn't care what burns, as long as something does. I understand that you were fully insured. Oh, yes. Completely. Was the warehouse full, Mr. Rents? Very full indeed, Sergeant. The housing shortage has prevented many families from taking their furniture out, even though they want to. Yes. Oh, by the way, Alex, have, uh, have you seen Mr. Taylor? Uh, no, no, sir. I haven't. That's queer. He called me about an hour ago and said he'd meet me here. I wonder what's keeping him. Uh, Mr. Emerson. I suppose you kept your safe here in the office. Well, we had no safe, Miss Carter. All business is transacted at the downtown office. No safe here. Oh, that's very peculiar. Yeah, what's peculiar about there being no safe here, Miss Carter? Maddie, let's get out of headquarters. Nothing more to do here. Right. Come along, Walter. We've got work to do. want you to find out who has a serial number I just gave you. with name and present address and where he works, if you can get it. Okay, Miss, I'll get at it right away. Oh, uh, when would you be back to the office? As soon as I get through here at headquarters. Bye. <laughs> hey, Nick, why were you so surprised that there was no space in the warehouse office, huh? Matty, have you forgotten? What? One thing about the Jersey firebug was that before he set fire to a building, he always robbed the safe that was in it. Uh-huh. I see what you mean. You think it might not have been the Jersey firebug that set this one, huh? Well, I'm just putting that fact away in the back of my head. Now, how about checking the prints of this clock against the others? I got the other prints right here, Nick. The see how they stuck up. Where did I put those? Uh, oh, here they are. Now, then, where's the clock you found? Uh, here it is. Uh, no. Huh? Uh, not the same. Well, that don't prove the Jersey firebug didn't do it, Nick. No, 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 of course not. Matt, you got one of the clocks you found at the other fire? Well, there's one at the 48th Street Station. They took it up there to make some tests on it. Want me to have it sent down, Nick? Yeah. I'd like to have this clock checked against the other to see if the system of wiring is the same. But isn't we may find that this fire was set by someone trying to make us think the Jersey firebug did it. Yeah, but look, Nick, none of the newspapers have ever carried anything about how that fellow set his fire. That part of it was always kept secret. So he wouldn't know that we had the information about it. Now, you better take the clock just the same. All of you stay here and wait for the other one to be sent down. Mm -hmm. Then you and Maddie check carefully to see if the way the clock is wired up is the same or different. Mm -hmm. Sure, come to the office. I'll be waiting for you. This information may be very valuable. <laughs> Drugstore this morning. I stopped in for my coffee. And I seen a little bit dull around here this morning. I was just looking through it. <laughs> as long as you don't believe anything you're getting, it won't hurt you. <laughs> oh, uh, did you find anything interesting with the fire? Oh, I don't know. Might be the work of the Jersey firebug. Since an alarm clock was used, set it off. The Jersey firebug? Yes. Why the surprise? Well, there's an article in this magazine I'm reading on him and all the fires he set. Oh, one of the series on pyromaniacs, apparently. Yes, so. Does it explain that system you use? Well, sure. Pictures, diagrams, and descriptions tells all about the clock. Well, does it show how the clock was hooked up? Oh, well, not in detail, no. It just says it was used to set off the fire. Right. Well, does it mention the fact that he always robbed the safe first? No. Uh, did he? Hmm. Well, someone could have read that article and tried to indicate the jersey like that, without knowing about the safe first. That's <laughs> true. Oh, oh, uh, did you find out to whom the army serial number belongs? Oh, 
After considerable telephoning around and getting something from one person to another, I finally got what she wanted. She saw Jay Huston, let out a couple of months ago on a medical discharge. Anxiety neurosis, they told her. I checked the USES, but they have no record of his having any job. Found any address for him? Well, the only address they had was the Sunset Trailer Camp out on Long Island. Really? If he was discharged because of anxiety neurosis, he must be the kind of man who would set fires and things. Oh, Patsy, you ought to know better than that. But me, could... Patsy, could... when they discharge a man from the army because of a neurosis, it doesn't mean he's cracked up or crazy. An anxiety neurosis is like overwork, run down. Boy, he's undoubtedly perfectly sane. Too many people, just as you did now, think a man with a medical discharge is nuts and refuse to have anything to do with him. All he really needs is a room with a chance to pull himself together again. Be just the same as you or I. Oh, but Nick, this clue you found at the fire seems to lead directly to him. Well, even if you did it, Patsy, it has nothing to do with it having a medical discharge. No war angle to this whatsoever. Uh, and who's never been in the army become fire for us. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I, I guess I just didn't think. Yeah, just like a lot of other people. Oh, well, I'm not trying to get comfortable about this, Patsy, but it's just that... Hi, uh, Nick. Well, how are you, Patsy? Well, uh, hi, Waldo. From the look on your face, you must have some news. Uh, uh, well, what'd you find, Waldo? You were right, Nick. The clock we found at the warehouse is picked up altogether different from the one Matthew had. Not the same at all. Oh. If it's lying, no space to crack, and an article in the magazine telling how to keep down. Uh, uh, I'd say it all adds up to let the Jersey fire bug out completely. In which case, you better be on our way to the Sunset Trailer Camp and have a talk with Charles J. Hackham. This is quite a camp, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. Must be more like criminal, too. The only thing look. Oh, poor Waldo. What caused that to Mike? thinking how sore Waldo was that she wouldn't bring him along. Waldo is one of those things called a procrastinator. <laughs> Give him a job to do, but because it's just routine running around, he tries to put it off as long as he possibly can. <laughs> oh, well, uh, this is the Hatchin trailer, this freeman with the white fin. It matches the description of the man the gate gave us the right location. Yeah. One of the door being open means the Hatchin's around somewhere. Well, we can look in, can't we? That won't hurt anything. Yeah, that should be all right. But I hope it shows up soon. Oh, there you are, Nick. Oh, man. Well, oh, well, well, the right arm of the law. What happened to you? You're right behind us. The next time I looked around, you disappeared. Oh, I got stopped at that last red light. Then I got boxed up behind a truck and couldn't get out. <laughs> Everything <laughs> happens to me. <laughs> um, is this the uh, Hudson's place? Yes, we were just going to have a look inside while we were waiting. Let's look here. Hmm? Look at that. Yeah. Made sort of a crime of this war human is. Hey, two very pistols, canteen, cartridge belt. And two sacks like the one Nick found after the fire, with the same identification on them. Yeah. And there should be a third one. Empty spaces. I guess, well, eh? What's two of Magnesium flares. Oh. oh, what a beautiful blaze that makes. It certainly looks like it has some had something to do with it. And the greenish blue sort of explosion the watchman saw could easily be a magnesium player. Yeah. It don't look so good for Mr. Houston. He's got some pretty fast explaining to do. Must be around somewhere. He wouldn't let the door open this way. What the devil are you doing in my trailer? Are you Charles Houston? Yes, so what? Came up here to see you. We're out, so we just looked in. How'd you get in? Uh, the door was open, so we walked in. Yeah, that's a likely story. I left the door locked. You must have broken it. That's what you did. What do you want? Are you sure you locked the door when you left? Sure, I'm sure. You calling me a liar? Not at all. But it was open when we got here. Yeah? Well, look here. You forced it open. See? Here's the march of the Jimmy. Huh? I thought you're right. Why is Jimmy open? If we didn't do it, Haskell, believe me. Why should I believe you? I can see what I see. The lock's busted and you're inside. Now, look here, Haskell. Cops don't go around breaking in doors that way. Cops? They're the worst of the whole bunch. A lot of people. Wait, no, all right, all right, Haskell, wait a minute. When did you leave here? Yesterday morning. What's it to you? What have you been doing since then? Why should I answer a lot of silly questions? I don't have to. Ask him, you better take it easy. Now, we want some information. If you won't tell us here, I'll have to take you down to headquarters and make you answer. What did I do? Kill somebody? What have you been doing since yesterday morning? 
isn't it bad enough to have no home at this lousy trailer, no place to bring my wife where we can live together, no job, no nothing? But you have to come here and accuse me of heaven knows why. We're not accusing you of anything yet. Uh, tell me, Haskam, uh, what happened to that sack of magnesium flares that's missing from your collection? What do you mean, missing? It was here when I left. Well, it's not there now. Any idea what happened to it? No, I haven't. You probably took it. Hey, my alarm clock is gone, too. Well, that's good. You bust in my door, steal my stuff, then ask me a lot of silly questions. I'm not accountable to anybody anymore. I got my discharge. I'm a free man. Free as anybody can be with the world the way it is. Look, Haskam, you're not making things any easier for yourself by doing this. Hey, hi, Charlie. What? What's Who's that? What job? The trucking job you had. What do you mean, trucking job? You're crazy. I thought you didn't have any job. You must know it was just a temporary job I took yesterday. Trucking some furniture. Yep. Furniture, did you say? Yes, furniture. For the Emerson Warehouse. It was oh. a rush job. They had a lot of stuff to get out in a hurry and needed drivers. Paid over scale, so I took it. I needed the money. And I still have no job. Next, you hear that? Hear what? Look, Haskam, you go to work for Emerson. You're going all night. The warehouse burns down by a fire. Set with magnesium flares like you've got there. And you I had nothing to that... do with any fire. No? Your army number is on the bag we found in the building when the fire was out. A bag just like them two you got in there now. Son, you and I are going down to headquarters. I want to know a lot more about this. Hey, you can't take me. No? Down. Oh, yes, I can. I'm going to. Tell me this. Uh, no, not just yet, buddy. I want to look around a bit. Uh, okay, I'll be seeing you. Come on, Haskell. We're going for a ride, you and me. I bet you can. Come on, sure, never mind. Terribly, so mixed up, he got into a jam without realizing what he was doing. I'm not satisfied as you. Don't forget, the lock on the door was broken open. Well, couldn't he have done that as a blind? Oh, yes, he could. I'm not going to look around for prints, though, on the door first. Uh-huh. You can compare them with Haskell's prints. There'd be plenty of those inside. And if they match? That would prove Haskell was a liar. And if they don't? Well, that's something else. Wouldn't prove much one way or the other. Not until we get some more facts to go with him. And that's our job right now, Pepsi. Getting all the facts we can. So the prince didn't know. Well, couldn't that mean that somebody was working with Haskam on this? It could. Well, that mean Haskam was innocent. Good afternoon. You the owner of this camp? Yeah, sure I am. But we're full up right now. See? I'm glad to hear it. And I just want some information. Oh, sure. Glad to tell you what I can. See? You know Charlie Haskin, don't you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Nice young fella. He didn't have a chip on his shoulder all the time. Not a very sociable fellow, I should imagine. Sure ain't. Does he have any friends in the camp here? Sure don't. I've seen him talk to the young couple leaving beside him, but that's all. See? I suppose you know most of the people in this camp. Oh, sure, he there ain't no chances just now, town of the housing, Jordan. Uh-huh. All nice people? Oh, sure, yeah. All except the guy got the tail of the other side of Haskell. Don't like him. He don't live there, just use it as a kind of office. Office? What kind? I don't know. But there's always a lot of queer-looking men running in out there every night. At least I can get rid of them, but they ain't found no good reason. Well, what's the name of the man living there? Terry Jones. William Jones. That's not a funny name. I'll look my name. Sounds funny, all right. Jones home now? No, no, never there during the day, only at night. Okay, thank you for your trouble. So long? Hey, so long, Richard. Glad to help you. We, um, calling Mr. Jones, Carolyn? We are, back immediately. Before Mr. Jones gets back, I hope. Say, may I speak to you a moment? What's on your mind? How well do you know Charlie Haskell? Well, is he in trouble? Maybe, maybe not. That's what I'm trying to find out. How well do you know him? Oh, just a feature. We don't make friends easy, that's I don't. So I know it. What was that about a job? Oh, why, yes. Well, this fellow offered me a job running a truck yesterday. Rush work, you know. When I was busy and I knew Charlie needed money, so I told him about it. Who offered you the job? Oh, a fellow named Jones. Uh, lives in that trailer right ahead of you there. I see. Okay, thanks very much. Oh, no, mention it. 
Say, I hope Johnny makes out all right. Hmm, that certainly ties up, doesn't it, Miss? The mysterious Mr. Jones seems to be indicated as our next point of contact, Jay Lee. Oh. Looks as if Jones was out, Miss. Sandra. Mr. Jones! Not so easy this time. His door is locked. Yes, I think he'll go in anyway. In broad daylight like this? The owner said Jones was never around in the daytime. And yeah, we can't wait. Oh, that was easy. I'll bet you what to do. Stay outside the door. If see anybody looks as if they were coming, they'll start singing. Mm-hmm. And I can get out fast. Right. Hey, listen. From here, you can look right into Haskins' cell and see his war souvenirs plainly. Maybe Mr. Jones... Maybe. Now, don't forget. If anyone comes, you will sing. <laughs> I'm going to try to pull him out of it. I asked Manny to let him out. 
Now, if they told me you wanted to see me, come here, Madison. Still think I'm a crook? No, I don't think you're a crook. And I never did. But if you've been a little more cooperative, with can help. Why should I be? Nobody ever cooperates with me. You don't give them a chance. Chance to what? Chance to be friendly. They're all against me. I can't get a break anywhere. Now, now, look. Nobody's against you. That little tough luck, same as a lot of other men just out of the service have had. And you've made a personal issue out of it. Just your own personal reaction to an unpleasant situation. How do you figure that? I can't get a job. I can't get a place where my wife and I can live together. I can't no, no, get... hold on, hold on, hold on. Not so fast. See if we can't do something about this. You know any other men who don't have jobs? Sure, plenty of them. You know any other men who haven't found a place to live? Yeah. But what's that got to do with... Everything. Are all these other men you know convinced that the world is out to do them dirt? Well, no. Not all of them, but I know a couple of them. Well, well, just... Weston, you're one of a small minority of guys that take it out and break it. It doesn't help the situation at all. Well, maybe, but I haven't what do you had do? a... I'm an auto mechanic. And a darn good one, too. I'm sure you are. Suppose I find you a job. Have you take it? Sure, I'll take it. And if you and your wife will be satisfied with a furnished room until something better offers, I can fix you up with that, too. Interested? Sure. Wait, if I can have Mary here with me, I, I, I feel a whole lot better. About everything, I guess. Oh, good. Here's $50. That'll help you to pay your wife's transportation and buy whatever things you need. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, look, Mr. Carter, I, I don't need your money. We'll make that. Somehow. Now, look, if you can spare it, it's a loan, right? I expect you to pay me back when you can. Thanks, Mr. Carter. You're swell. That's Miss Carter, all over. Only trying to help somebody when he can. Now, why are you doing all this for me? A stranger. Captain, we all owe you, boys. We're in the service. More than we can ever replace. And if anything I can do will help to pay that debt, and get you started on the right road, I want to do it. I'm going to see that you get what's coming to you. Oh, Nick, that's what you usually say with the crooks you can't. You're going to get what's coming to you. Oh, yes, that's the idea, but this time I'm talking to a friend. Right, Hudson? Right, Mr. Carter. Oh, gotcha. Friend is a wonderful thing to have, isn't it? How about letting us in on your story for next week? Glad to do it, Phil. My story includes the list of the diamonds stolen from Mrs. Larkin's safe, the print of a pointed shoe in the garden, the telephone number that refused to answer, and the place where diamonds are worth more than anywhere else in the world. And there was excitement, too. When our plane dropped down through the fog trying to locate that ship at sea, oh, I was sure my last hour had come. Clues and excitement, eh? Sounds like a good combination. What's the name of the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Unwilling Criminal. Next Carter, Master Detective, which is produced and directed by Jack McGregor, is copyrighted by Speed and Smith Publications Incorporated. Fictive stories of Nick Carter appear in every issue of the Shadow Comics. In the broadcast of Nick Carter, Master Detective, Ron Clark is starred as Nick, Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy, Matty is played by Ed Latimer, Waldo by Humphrey Davis. Original music is played by George Wright. Script is by Peggy Mayer and Josh McGregor. Any resemblance in these programs to actual persons living or dead or to actual places is purely coincidental. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented over most of these mutual stations every week at the same time. This is Bill Johnson saying so long until next week. This program was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.